Welcome to Textiles and the Triplet Sisters. I'm Lori Lee Triplet, and today we're going to be talking about painting on textiles. Now, if you happen to have watched the video about the Dutch exhibition where you saw examples of hand painted textiles from India, we're going to explore some of those techniques as well as some other uh, newer, easier ones to do for ourselves. Remember that if you can't find the fabric that you want for your particular quilt, it doesn't matter. Make your own. So let's look at some couple of different examples to give you an idea. Now this one is entirely all hand painted and so it was inspired by an 1856 Huguenot friendship quilt. I didn't leave the blocks the same size and I didn't applique. I chose to paint them all individually. Now I will give you a recommendation and that is this border print. <clears throat> I painted 28 of those blocks by hand and I would recommend that you select nothing that you have to paint 28 times exactly the same. But if that's the effect you're going for, go for it. You can also hand paint textiles and mix them with uh, pre-printed or commercial fabric and then you pick and choose which sections you want to have hand painted. One note about mixing hand painted with the commercial textiles that we're able to produce uh, and purchase right now is that we as a uh, group of fabric purchasers really like our uh, details outlined and so as you're painting hand painting your own you may choose to outline uh, those hand painted details uh, just so that there isn't quite the shift between the two. But remember, if you really want it to look hand painted, most of us would not outline our hand painted details. So let's look at some different ways that we would hand paint a textile. Uh, remember that especially with our more uh, contemporary quilts, we might want to hand paint the background. And this is called a color wash technique. And you want to uh, dampen your fabric first and then provide all the background color first and with different colors added in. You may need to let your fabric dry before you then hand paint your uh, center part or your detail part of the particular block. In this case, I put no background color on and instead I chose fabric that had a texture to it, a an, sort of a white on off. White is a fabric I like to use a lot or uh, off-white on white so that it gives me some detail and texture in the painting itself without having to individually paint each uh, item. Also, I've noticed that when I mix it with uh, commercially printed fabric, it will have a, a better flow together with the two pieces because I have this textured background which we're used to looking rather than a prepared for dyeing fabric, which of course is completely uh, white and plain. Now, for some of you that might be afraid of hand painting, or you might tell me, I've had many people tell me, I just don't have the skill to do it. That is not true. Let's cheat. Um, think about using a stencil. Um, this stencil provides a beautiful detail and um, would add to any quilt that you wanted to use. So simply go to your craft store and pick up the stencil that appeals to you and use that. Now one thing about stenciling on fabric as opposed to a wall is that fabric does absorb um, moisture and so it will sort of wick out or bleed out. So I found it helpful to take a invisible ink or a washable and outline it and then I fill it in either with a textile marker. Um, this one has a brush on it and so I really like the fact that it has that brush. It allows me to get fine lines and details. So you can see that I can paint a very fine line or if I choose I can make it uh, thick. 
or you can of course use a textile a paint. Now I prefer to use textile paint rather than acrylic paint with a medium or pencils with a medium because then I don't have to have the medium and I don't have to use prepared for dyeing fabric. I can just pull fabric out of my stash or go to the quilt shop and get uh, fabric uh, or an Etsy shop online, wherever you get your fabric. If you're using textile markers or textile paint, you don't have to worry about uh, it being, it can still be washable. So to make it washable, be sure you follow the directions of the paint or markers. In the case of these two examples, um, it's just heat set. So when you iron it, um, you have heat set your paint and then you can wash it without any difficulties. So if stenciling isn't quite the look that you want, then you might consider some of the techniques that were used in the uh, Indian textiles or the the Dutch imported fabrics, and that was block printing. They would uh, adhere the paint or the ink, depending on what they were using, to their different blocks. They had registration marks so they could line these up, and then they would simply uh, press down one in one color, and then move on to provide additional details by pressing down the second block. Another way to use that is to use a block to outline something and then choose to paint in with either your textile paints or textile markers. Again, that allows you not have to completely hand paint it from scratch. Um, and you can use whatever block you find or stencils that you find. But if you would like to hand paint your a textile, this is the method that I personally prefer. I decide what size my quilt block is going to be in the, especially when I'm mixing it with commercial fabric. And so I create a frame. Now this is as if it was a six inch block here. Um, I'm going to cut that frame out and then I have what is the finished six inch block. Next, I'll take a pencil and sketch in what I want. And this helps me to be sure that the best part of the painting is not off into the seam. Um, it also helps me with the placement of the item that I'm going to paint. Do I want it center? Do I want it following rules of, of thirds? And so sketching it out really makes a difference. Once I have this, got the sketch the way I want it, I am going to decide if I want a, a pre-printed textile that has a tone on tone, which is this one that I have selected, and I will decide whether I want a color wash or not. Uh, so for example, this has the color wash background on it, and I did that by just getting my fabric slightly damp and then using um, the textile paint to give it a light uh, coloration all over. Then next I'm going to add the details and I'll just take a regular paintbrush, whatever paintbrush I have, and my textile paint and add the different uh, details that I want. I still use this frame occasionally to check did I stay within this? No, I didn't because this one is intended for a seven inch block. But it's a good reminder to keep using this and deciding, well, maybe I'd like it like that. Do I want to include more grass? So that you can really get the look to the quilt block that you want. After you've got it, the textile paint on it, the background is done, and you've got your foreground and details done, you might look and see if you want to add any additional details. And markers are ideal for that because they have the finer point, and in this case, a little brush mark. And you can mix the markers and the textile paint without concern. Now, I still have not set this, so I could not wash this now. Um, I would lose my hard work. So my final step is is to take this to the iron and I'm going to put it between sheets of either parchment paper or wax paper and press it. And I'm going to make sure that it um, really heats up the fabric and so that the, the 
paint will adhere to the fabric itself. And you can see if you look at your back, I have not heat set this yet. So there's very little of the paint that has gone through. Once you begin to heat set it, you'll see more of your image come through on the back side, and that lets you know that you have heat set your fabric. So you can now paint whatever you want and have whatever uh, object or image that you would like in your quilt. So be sure that you have a fun and fabulous day as you are doing your painting. And I hope that you'll subscribe to us and check out our other videos as well.